award-winning broadcast journalist, lecturer, and public policy analyst, Adeni Kunu. And of course, our RISE analyst, Emmanuel Efeni, is still here with us. Well, thank you for joining us, thank you very much. Adeni Kunu. Yes, please. Well, let's start off with analyzing the whole voting exercise mm -hmm. yesterday. We've talked about violence. We've talked about voter apathy. What I really want you to talk about also is voter inducement, vote buying. Mm -hmm. I believe we saw a video uh, that was circulating. I don't know if you saw that PDP commissioner in Bauchi State yeah. that was sharing money, money. brazenly in the open. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on In the first place, that? you don't look at things in isolation. So we have to do some little retrospection to what has been going on since December of last year or November. Don't forget they announced the fact that we're going to have some Naira change somewhere from the former Naira to the died Naira. Uh, because when you say new, I still wonder if that money is actually new. Um, Nigerians uh, are those, have those who really live off what they earn daily. And most of these transactions are done not electronically, they are done by hand. So if you check the popularization of the people, enabled by uh, Godwin Emefiele, whose fiscal finance strategy is minus zero. I uh, you agree with me that people will be e easily induced when the election <coughs> comes. And that is why political leadership must be very strategic, must be intelligent, and must also be humane. You may be intelligent and you don't understand the street. Your social capital is very key apart from your intelligence. And these are the things that we perhaps didn't see in the decision we made. Even for respective people who are participating in the election as candidates, they need money for logistics. And we also know that conventional banks have not strengthened their base enough to allow the smooth execution of electronic transfer. So you're talking about the policy, a hundred days or five months or thereabout before the elections. You're talking about people who have lost their jobs. You're not talking about people who have money to go to polling centers and give them something that I tell you, even the devil will fall into that temptation because somebody could look at it and say, money I can't get. Even after the reversal, so to speak, of the popularization policy of Emifele, people still don't have access to their money. And let me tell the world now that the amount you have access to, according to law, is half a million a week, not a hundred thousand. Yet people cannot get more than 20,000 per time. So if you look at that alone, it will shake any major policy decision being made. So for the inducement we've seen, it is to capitalize on people, uh, their lack, and the fact that many of them are not educated enough. Let's look at Cardinal that I just went to. Kaduna is about 46,000 square kilometers, the fourth largest in Nigeria. Some local governments are bigger than Lagos State. The population as of the last time is in excess of 6 million. So let me add four. Talking about the 2006 population census we conducted. So a, a, a state that is well over 10 times as it was, because Lagos is, for instance, 3,000 plus square kilometers. Kaduna is 46,000 plus square kilometers. So you can get countless of the geo size of Lagos in Kaduna. And you're talking about that state where people have to travel to the nooks and crannies and not have access. So I need to say this, that the elections have not left us with something to be very happy about. Mm -hmm. Not so much about INEC, but also all other agencies of government that have not aligned properly. So I can tell you very clearly that it's not properly thought out. And uh, maybe a Mayfield himself should be ready to leave with the president when he leaves office, because it has to be said. The, for instance, they're talking about the inflation rate, 21.19 percent current inflation rate associated with the same financial policy that they told us was going to help us get better. So when you look at elections, you don't look at election in isolation. You look at the respective factors that could cause a pummeling of the stability of things. Because even people who would move from Lagos, for instance, to their polling centers, maybe their villages, they need money. And if you cannot access it, it is not all transportation companies that take transfers. So let's understand that the election problems are not just problems associated associated with INEC alone. Of course, INEC takes the core of the blame. But there are other things that have made this system a mess. And, you know, it yeah, hurts. Yeah, yes, Dr. please. Kono, um, um, with or without uh, the 
uh, the dying yes, of the please. Naira okay, that you made please. reference yes, to, uh, those who are hell bent on uh, corrupting or buying vote will yes. still have gone ahead. So, no, so, so, obvious, so, so I want obvious. us to acknowledge yeah. that EFCC, you know, uh, claims that they have arrested about 67, uh, didn't they? So I think that is important to well, us. Well, I'm, I'm very happy that they have arrested them. Yes. But I think um, the purpose of just keeping people off their legitimate incomes mm -hmm kept in trust in banks is also part of the subtraction from positive realities of our existence. I need to say that the EFCC has told us they've arrested people. I agree. But in what ways have we had the money policy prevent vote buying? In fact, there are lots of other vote buying that we didn't capture on camera. Plenty of it. I have could, lived could in it. Possibly be uh, because, because of the pressure on the CBN uh, to return to the owner. No, no, no. In the first place, the CBN should not have gone there. As we speak right now, uh, there's a policy change in terms of finance in the United Kingdom. And people are still collecting the money. The greenback also. For instance, people can still spend their greenbacks. I'm talking about the dollar, for instance. Mm -hmm. If you happen to still have the former one. People can still have access. There are certain things no, that... But we also had um, former Minister of Transportation, Rotimi Amici, yes, on the show last night on yes, Newsnights, and he said that he was at his polling unit and there was POS transaction going on so at the time. What are people saying? Yeah. No, no, it's not about... Yeah. No. So, well, people always find a way around some of those things. But ultimately, I think it is very key for us to look at the things we didn't do right. Now, we're talking about inducements. Yes. Inducements are enabled by those who have power and those who have deep pockets. What is the position of the law regarding the people that can pay their way through and buy the votes of others? What we saw, especially much of what Arise brought the world, uh, since yesterday shows that it is either incapacity or not being able to understand that you don't have to be complete. Look at law enforcement agencies around polling centers where some of this infraction takes place. You would have expected that those who had their terms of reference to protect the people at the polling centers are able to accomplish that. But we see that many of them look the other way, perhaps maybe because they are not allowed to bring their ammunition close to where the voting was taking place. But ultimately, this election has left us with a lot of things to rethink and a lot of things to rejig because Nigeria should be an exemplary country to the world, but what we see is a subtraction from what we hope to attain. I have to say that. Rethinking yeah. our neck. Yes. Isn't it? Yes, Emmanuel, please. would that be uh, the kind of uh, catchphrase that um, uh, going forward people can begin to uh, engage with? Rethinking INEC and how INEC operates? Yeah, before I come to INEC, let me yeah. just say a word or two on this voter inducement. Yes, please. Yes, because. Uh, we almost turn into the Mefile critique Mayfiel. on the Mefile policy. Yes, the Mayfiel. I don't think um, we should just reduce it to that. Yes, unfortunately, this Naira redesign, you call it a... Uh, redesign. <laughs> redesign. <laughs> well, <laughs> the redesign of uh, the Naira, 200 Naira, 500 Naira, and 1,000 Naira. Yes, it came very close to the election. The president did not help matters. He said it is meant to stop vote by. Mm. Among other things. Amongst other things. Now, even if we had not touched the Naira, we're just jolly good with yeah. our good old currency. Yes, we did not nobody complained about the old currency. If we're just good with that and nobody changed the colour of anything, vote buying would have been part of politicians. Strategy political yeah. strategy. Right. And it has been so for quite some time. Stomach infrastructure, they call it at one point. Yeah. And um, of course, because politicians have also weaponized poverty, the people are poor. People that are supposed to serve and alleviate their situation. They have made them poor, and as such, they know on election day, 2,000 Naira can make a man just cast his vote without even thinking of the future. So what we have to address is the 65 or 67 persons arrested. Yeah. What's going to happen to those 65 persons? Mm -hmm. That's true. If they are not taken to the, to the courts, tried and jailed, next time people will just continue. Or, or fined. Or fined. On what the law says. Yes, because the Electoral Act 2022 Two. is clear on that. Section 121 
talks about bribery and uh, conspiracy, okay. inducement, and all that. So if we don't start enforcing our laws, politicians will continue to use these dirty tactics as part of their planning because they make money available for that to go around and buy votes. So I think that is something we have to address. Okay. Um, right. Arrest people who are involved, whether they are using POS yeah. or they are doing transfers, and uh, make sure people are brought, used right. as example. But right, if that is not done, okay. I think we'll continue to see this happen. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Before yeah. we close the show, I mean, that was a coalition <laughs> announcement in Enugu State. Earlier, we had River State. But I'd like your general assessment really quickly on INEC. Well, basically, uh, if you check the feelers, uh, especially for many of the southern states, it's not been something we're very happy about. Um, let's understand that there is a price to pay for being a sensitized and highly set educated society. In many societies where the level of education and exposure is high, you'd have a corresponding level of awareness that to bring this kind of thing to the fore, where people are more aware of their rights, their privileges, and their responsibilities. Uh, and it means, therefore, that in these areas where the level of awareness, education, and sensitization is high, it means that those who manage the process must do so circumspectly, respectfully, and ensure that they don't mess all of the processes up. Yeah. If you look at Rivers, Rivers has the same political template and texture or fabric like Lagos. If you take it away from there, you go to some areas of the southeast, it's the same thing. So I think that INEC has its work cut out for it. Uh, moving forward into any elections that will take. Don't forget, we've still got about, I think, nine states or thereabouts, or how many states for staggered elections. So this year, we should be going to Kogi. So whatever it is that INEC has taken from here, because Kogi also has tendency for volatility. Don't forget the history of Kogi 2019 and how they were brandishing right, weapons. Kono, just, oh, goodness. just a quick one. Uh, here is Lagos. It was meant to start at 11, okay. but now they are up. And right, uh, that's the coalition center. Good one. Uh, yeah, in Lagos. You can go on with your yeah, so, yeah, uh, general yeah. assessment. Okay, so general Ine. assessment for me is that INEC has its work cut out for it right now. As we move towards the staggered elections, every error that has been recorded here must be endeavored to be avoided in the next election that we'll have. And also, a high level of political education, political sensitization. Let me tell you, the, the knowledge quotient of the average Nigerian is also very minimal when it comes to elections. Those things are key amongst many other things. Well, all right. Well, all right, Emmanuel, just one much. last sentence before we finally wrap up. Well, uh, it's unfortunate that um, we had to sort of experiment with the presidential election. <laughs> 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 because that's what, that's what it has turned out to be. Yes. Yes. <laughs> we did, we, I know did better in the a gubernatorial election, but it's very unfortunate. But going forward, our neck has to sit up. Mm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, All right. Thank you both for we engaging you us indeed. this thank morning. You. And that brings us to the end of the first segment of today's Nigeria Decides 2023 Governorship and State Houses of Assembly election coverage here on Arise News Channel. Many thanks to everyone that contributed one way or the other to illuminating the information space on the elections up to this point. Special appreciation to our distinguished guests and analysts and everyone that worked behind the scenes to make it happen. I am Steve Ayoride. And I am Oji Okwe. It's been quite a journey as we continue to track developments from across the country. Rest assured that our Rise News channel is doubly encouraged to put you beloved citizens of Nigeria at the forefront of all our operations, irrespective of tribe, creed or religion. Our dear colleagues, Leila Johnson Salami and Ruben Abati will henceforth assume the driver's seat as Steve and I bid our farewell. Do have a great day.